Hey guys, welcome to Rock and Reacts. We're here after a uh, electrifying victory in front of a sold out crowd at Furrow Field from the number six ranked Missouri Tigers over the number 24 ranked Boston College Eagles. Um, lot to talk about after this game today. Uh, Coach Drink said it's the obvious game of the season so far, and you know, obviously, and obviously the first time that this team has really experienced some adversity, but they did indeed pull it out in the end. Uh, Quentin, uh, I wanted to ask you about what you felt. How do you feel the Tigers opened up the game against a mobile quarterback like Castellanos? And how do you think they adjusted? Yeah, uh, definitely a slow start. I mean, through these first, through the first two games against Murray State and Buffalo, the only period of time where the game was ever really in doubt was that first quarter against Buffalo. And I was curious to see how Mizzou was going to start again. And once again, the opponents uh, looked to be, at the very least, uh, an even match. And this time, honestly, Boston College looked like a superior match. I think the biggest worry for a lot uh, of people regarding Mizzou's defense was Nick Castellanos, or not Nick Castellanos, he plays in the MLB, Thomas Castellanos, who plays college football uh, at Boston College. Uh, I think it was going to be Thomas Castellanos' ability to use his legs and extend plays with his legs. And we saw that first play of the game. It was a rollout to the right. It was only a pickup of seven, but I was thinking to myself, hmm, could this be a trend? Could this be a continuation? And turns out it wasn't. Um, really, after that first quarter, those first couple of drives, I thought Mizzou did a fantastic job uh, of keeping Castellanos in the pocket. Uh, Drogovic said after the game that he thought he, they did a really great job of keeping him in the pocket. I think when you look at a game like last year against LSU and Jaden Daniels, Mizzou did not do a very good job of keeping him in the pocket. Um, you see rushes from the edge, uh, where the edge rusher is going past the quarterback. And so now the defense is down a man, and Jaden Daniels oftentimes was able to exploit that. This time around, I thought Mizzou's defensive line especially was super cohesive. Rarely did you ever see Castellanos able to break something to the edge, which he's done already a lot of times this season. Uh, he's made most of his money off the scrambles versus design runs. And even on design runs, there was not a whole lot of room um, as the game went on, especially on the interior and Adin. Uh, I'd like you to expound on that more after those first couple of drives. The defensive line especially really tightened up. What did you see? So you saw that they, one of the things that they were allowing from Boston College that they definitely didn't want to allow was, you know, Robichaux was kind of getting some runs going early in the game. Uh, in between the tackles, so to fix that up, to really clean that up, they added another lineman to the defensive interior for most of the plays. And uh, one thing I really noticed was the way they were rushing the quarterback. You could see they were kind of trying to trap Castellanos with his own offensive lineman. The the objective really looked like to kind of forklift, push their offensive lineman into Castellanos rather than going around the edge like they did last year in the Dan Janos games, as you uh, you know. Uh, you, as you put it, because in that situation, he was just leaving a wide open uh, hole down the middle. And even with a quarterback spy and middle linebacker, you got a mobile quarterback versus a middle linebacker. I, I, I know who's going to win that battle most of the time, especially with a guy who can run as good as Castellanos over here. And that adjustment as a whole just made Castellanos like super uncomfortable. You could see that he was forcing things that he normally doesn't. Obviously, both those interceptions that they had this game, you can really attribute it to the confusion that the defensive line created because these are both plays that a, a quarterback like with the experience that Cassiano has, Cassiano has would not make. Um, both of them throws that are just not there. And it's really had, it's a heads up play by the DBs, uh, Travis Johnson and Drayton Norwood. But even more so, you have to give a lot of credit to the D-line for creating a play like that. And um, I think it was just, um, you know, Drink said after the game, Corey Batoon, he's a cool cucumber. And I think that's probably as good of a description as I've ever heard for him so far from what I've seen this season. There were two busts in coverage, um, you know, Drink described it as little league football uh, <laughs> type of play after the fumble and then the entire team uh, tries to pursue the quarterback, which is good in theory, but really not. Um, it, it, it really looked like an engage eight kind of Madden play after this point. And uh, with those plays, if there's more than two guys in going out for the for a route, then there's probably a touchdown. And uh, Reed Harris, you know, proved them, proved them right there. And then obviously there's... Uh, uh, Kamari Morales uh, wide open in cover three that uh, was a play that definitely could be cleaned up but if you clean up those plays this is a three score win um, before that last drive actually uh, Mizzou had only allowed 59 yards uh, on like 25 or something plays um, 
after the Trevez Johnson interception. So Quinn, I want to ask you about how big of a momentum shift that play was and how do you think the offense kind of fed off of that momentum shift? Yeah, uh, so I mean, Thomas Castellanos had missed a, a few open guys and I was wondering when it would eventually cost him and sure enough it did uh, on a deep throw over the middle under the very heavy coverage uh, Travis Johnson was essentially playing center field he read Castellanos his eyes perfectly and more importantly he came away with the catch uh, and he was able to get yards after the catch which set Mizzou up pretty nicely and then step two uh, in terms of generating momentum trying to get it back is you capitalize off of those big plays um, and the few moments after Travis Johnson's interception was Luther Burden breaking, I believe it was three or four tackles. I'd say four. So, four tackles uh, on his way to the end zone. It, it, it's funny, I, if you take a screen grab, uh, so I say screen grab like I'm 50 years old, if you take a screenshot uh, of where Luther Burden was amidst his catch and run, and you asked 100 random people, hey, do you think the wide receivers scored? probably get a lot of no's, which has been, so a, a, which has been a lot of Luther Burton touchdowns. Um, but there were a few catches today, the touchdown catch included, um, where it looked like he was a one-man army facing a, a handful of opponents, and he bested all of them, uh, including the touchdown catch. He spins away from one defender, breaks another three tackles, and scores. Um, so he had six catches for 117 yards and a touchdown today. They were getting him pretty involved uh, sporadically. Um, they weren't feeding him the ball like, for example, they have been feeding Theo Beast. Um, that was more of a product, especially last week against Buffalo. That was more of a product of what the defense was giving the zoo. And they were more than okay with running Theo Weiss on little hitches, on little posts, and getting yeah. 6 to 11 yards every single time. Uh, that's what led to career highs in receptions and reception yards. Um, but I thought after the interception, the zoo responded fantastically. And then Drayden Norwood comes away with another later um, which was another huge play. Um, I've been waiting for him to make a really big play. He made a handful of them last season in a yeah. reserve role, um, but he finally got his time to shine today. And then Dalen Carnell as well, even though he didn't come away with the interception, almost came he away should with have. one yes. and had two pretty sweet pass breakups. Yeah. Uh, so I thought the secondary, although uh, the two coverage busts were definitely inexcusable, uh, and hopefully for their sake we'll get cleaned up for next week against Vanderbilt. Um, but I thought they made big time plays and big moments. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to touch on was early in the game, one of the stories was really how they were targeting Toriano Pride. They were targeting Toriano Pride a lot, and uh, Toriano Pride had a pretty uh, harsh pass interference call, we'll say that, um, uh, to you know extend a drive that led to uh, some points on the board for BC. But after that, he really cleaned up his game and got his head in the game and didn't allow the Boston College receivers to really be a factor for the rest of the game. You know, Casta, Castellanos was 155 yards and two touchdowns uh, to begin the game. I, I believe he didn't get much more than that to finish. Yeah. Um, and one more thing that I want to talk about really was Nate Noel tonight, uh, today, sorry. Nate Noel was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Drink talked about how uh, this was an outside zone kind of game, and if it's ever that kind of game, it really spells well for a fast back that can find the hole quite like Nate Noel. Mm -hmm. And um, he, you know, right off the bat, starting the game, you could really tell that this is something the offense needs to place more emphasis on because um, while Boston College was covering well uh, to start the game, uh, they were just overmatched in the interior, especially against uh, you know the guards for Missouri today. Um, one little thing, Brett Norfleet got some action today, but you can tell that his shoulder injury probably still lingering. He wasn't really keen to embrace contact today. Uh, saw him on his first two catches kind of go down very quickly, um, where normally, you know, fully healthy, Brett Norfleet's going to lower his shoulder and let a guy know. Um, and really, as a whole, I think this game um, was defined by uh, mental toughness from this team. Uh, this team responded to adversity well, not perfectly, but um, one shout out I want to give out to Blake Craig. Blake Craig had an absolutely phenomenal game, uh, four for four um, on, on the field goals today, a, a, a booming 55, 55, 56 yarder. Um, and if he can be like that, you know, he's got, he's a redshirt freshman, he's got a lot of time, but if he can be like that consistently, you might not see him play until he's a senior. Um, he's got help, he's got a hell of a leg. And uh, if he just can touch up that accuracy, obviously last week some misses from 50 plus, um, but if he can touch up that accuracy, um, he's gonna be a great asset for this team. Um, and other than that, really, uh, Quinn, I wanna ask you, what do you think this game means for next week? 
obviously have another mobile quarterback coming into town who really put on a show, especially week one, and Diego Pavia. So what do you think about that? Uh, I think this game showed that despite the personnel being different from last season, uh, the foundation uh, and the results for now seems to be the same. Uh, Mizzou, as you all watching probably know, came from behind a lot last season, whether it was Kentucky, whether it was Florida, whether it was even a, a rock fight against Ohio State. Uh, one of the defining traits of the 2023 team, out of many, was their ability to respond to early adversity. And they were faced with that once again today. And the past couple of weeks, as I had said before, they hadn't really been faced with that at all against Murray State and Buffalo. And they get knocked in the mouth early, go down 14 to three. It's, the quietest it had been uh, in this young season here at Faroe Field, but they were able to respond on both sides of the ball. Um, and I think Travesh Johnson put it really nicely when he was asked about what was the key to bouncing back, and he said, don't flinch. And even though they, in a literal sense, flinched a handful of times, whether it was it was penalties, uh, whether it was penalties, whether it was coverage busts, they were able to rebound, and they didn't let that snowball into future mistakes. Um, and I still think highly of Boston College. I still think they're one of the better teams in the ACC. Again, especially after punking Florida State, who is now 0-3. <laughs> still without a win after losing uh, to Mike Morvell's former school in the University of Memphis on their home turf. Um, and so I, I still think highly of Boston College. I still think that's a pretty good team. And as you said, Adine, outside of a, a couple of coverage busts, I think this game could have been something like 27 to even 14, 27 to seven. I thought Mizzou's yeah. defense played really, really well. Uh, and what we're seeing right now is translatable. Obviously a few nitpicks uh, outside of the big things that we haven't really talked about Brady Cook, which I guess is a good and sort of bad, but mostly good thing. Um, didn't make any bad mistakes. His touchdown run was pretty sweet. The one where he stopped on, I don't know, you'd want to call it a dime. What's something smaller than a dime? I think of something smaller than a dime. That's where I think he stopped on. That is sent a couple of white jerseys in the other direction, dove it in the end zone, and left Nate Noel pretty pretty shocked. Yeah. As he said after the game, he said he didn't think he had uh, that kind of play in him. But lo and behold, Brady Cook showing off uh, some superior athletic abilities on that touchdown run. Yeah. Um, and so I think this stuff is translatable next week. Vanderbilt, these are not the same Commodores. Uh, that Mizzou has been used to seeing, especially yeah. over the past few years. Uh, and so I think if they can translate their defensive efforts, especially defending a mobile quarterback like they did, not just with the defensive line, but the linebackers almost always had a, at least one spy. Yeah. Uh, on Thomas Castellanos, forced Diego Pavia to beat them with his arm. Um, I think Mizzou's in a pretty good spot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Diego Pavia is one of those guys that he's not going to back down. Uh, he showed it at New Mexico. Uh, New Mexico State, sorry, sorry, New Mexico State, um, and uh, he showed that he is willing to do whatever it takes to get a victory, especially in week one. So a guy like that who knows how to win no matter where he's been, that's an intimidating player. So they're going to have to be ready for, for Diego, and just the rest of the Vanderbilt team as a whole, they, they look very, very good this year. Uh, if they come out in that game 3-0, they're going to have something to prove. They're going to look at that game as a game that they could springboard their season for the first time in a while since the James Franklin days. So um, really, uh, they're gonna have to have their heads up with that. But you know, that's really all we got to say. Uh, for, from Rock and Reacts, I'm Adine Rao, and this is Quentin Corpuel. Oh, so. you remembered. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was kind of hoping you would say it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, we'll work on that for next time. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much for uh, watching, and uh, it's, we're signing out from Perot Field. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Rock M Radio, a proud partner of Fans First Sports Network. Rock M Radio is the official podcast network of Rock M Plus, a new and exciting subscription service provided by me and the other voices of Rock M Radio. Please take a few moments to head over to rockm.plus and sign up for an account today. The cost is only $5 a month, and the benefits include access to our live podcast, a subscriber only message board, weekly newsletters, and more. If you enjoyed this episode of Rock M Radio and would like to see more just like it beamed directly into your personal device, make sure to click the subscribe button below and tell your friends. Our podcast feed is available through the Apple Podcast app for iPhone, Google Podcast app for Android, whatever app you listen to your podcast. You can also find Rock M Radio on Spotify. If you're looking for a podcast about your favorite team that is not Missouri Tigers, Fan First Sports Network is your answer. A full podcast network loaded with the team-specific podcasts covering Major League Baseball, the NFL, NHL, NBA, MLS, and more. And we'll be back with more episodes of Rock and Radio coming to you soon.